Hello YouTube, this is Morgan Airspeed Prime here with my next Boruto anime review. This one is going to be for episode 248. So, an interesting episode because it was actually relatively eventful. Like, it was all action. It was Funimoshi's attack. Um, a character dies? Uh, Funimoshi is dying? Question mark? Um... If this episode had a little bit of a better budget to portray the fight better, I think it would quite heavily change the episode from being, I think, you know, good to maybe getting towards being very good. There's always going to be arguments about when you kill off characters, is it the right thing to do? Uh, was there a better way to do things? Because what you did with the death of Kagura was you basically are taking the potential of that character and that a lot of people were thinking you know here's a future kage uh, we're really setting up this anime only character to kind of be important for the future so his death feels like okay you are now passing this on the potential of this character is being passed on to uh, bunten hebichigo and kyo they kill off hebichigo in this episode now I suppose that makes sense to a certain degree, you just told her backstory, but there's a sense where because you've already killed off Kagura, why are you now killing off Hebichigo? Surely you can use Hebichigo going forward. So what are they doing? I thought they were going to kill off Hebichigo and Kyo-o because earlier on in the episode Kyo-o gets like stabbed in the shoulder and is injured. So. I am interested to see how they go with this. I'm assuming Buntan for sure is going to survive the arc because there's no way they're not. Surely there's no way they're not going to have one of these swordsman characters continue on Kagura's legacy. And I think ultimately Buntan is being placed into that position. The question is going to be, is Kyo also going to sacrifice himself over the course of this arc? So Buntan sort of has this you know, separation from all these characters and now gets a chance to sort of, in a way, sort of shine on her own, but continue on the legacy of all these other characters. That, I think, shows a little bit of potential, or will they have Kyo-o survive and sort of the two of them work together, that they, here's Bunta and her, like, her right-hand man type thing. Um, definitely one thing when we get towards the end of this arc is that they need to do a good job with Buntan in terms of transitioning her from their working with the criminal who's trying to rehabilitate themselves to what the character now goes on to do. I have a feeling they might try and do some sort of a thing where they have like Buntan become like the warden of the prison. I'm not sure if that will work um, just because she was previously in there. Uh, I'm not sure. But if they are going to have her sort of become the new potential Kage for the future, I'm relatively okay with that. It's just you do need to give her some focus by the time we get to the end of all of this. So I mentioned the death of Hebichigo. Let's discuss what happened here. So uh, when the fight breaks out, um, you know, it, it's, it's pretty... It's somewhat intense. It's not helped by the fact that it's it's sort of basic animation. They're not fully going all out. There's there's gl there's glimpses of some decent stuff, but fundamentally they're not doing too much. Funimushi uh, we it has an encounter with Borto and Kawaki and so on, um, and we know his his water style jutsu is quite good. We initially get some. Borto does more damage to him by using lightning style, but then the rain comes in, and this is part of why Funimushi attacked at this point. So him with the rain, he's able to use his actually most powerful jutsu, which is this giant sort of uh, water tornado jellyfish form with all the sort of tentacles being able to go out. So he covers a wide area. It's a huge um, area of effect jutsu that... They realize the only chance to defeat him is to basically, uh, you know, take out the caster. We're not going to take this thing down by, like, cutting through the body of the jutsu. We have to actually stop Funamushi from using this. So they decide Boruto's the one who has to do this, of course, main character. So he wants to get in close for a Rasengan, and everyone else is sort of playing support. Um, they focus on the idea that Heavy Chigo is going to be important here because with her threads on her sword... Uh, she can 
theoretically block this giant monster, at least for a little bit. So the dynamic we have is that she's sort of locked in position, holding the monster in place. Uh, Metal is protecting her by taking out the other soldiers around uh, her. And Borto's trying to fight. Now, what happens is that... Um, she's holding on, the nosebleed is coming out, she's putting a lot of effort into this to hold a giant monster in place. Um, he breaks out of it, she's sort of held in place temporarily, and she gets a full-on um, heavy impact from one of the tentacles, and is thrown through the air, blood spraying out. Um, the implication sort of seems to be that sort of it sort of like broke her neck or something like that. That seems to be the general kind of... Uh, idea about what happened and so she's on the ground but the battle has to take place so we're not exactly sure what her situation is metal does react like it is like a devastating blow but the fight still is going on uh borto seemingly also gets hit by one of these things but you know he comes through goes up top does land like some sort of a rasengan and it seems like the fight is over now this is one of the moments where they did kind of, you know, get me a little bit with a bit of a surprise moment in that Funamushi just pops straight back up, already injured from the, the previous Rasengan, which he's only had like a day to recover from. He takes another one, pops right back up and is about to stab Borto when like Bunton just out of nowhere just appears right beside Funamushi, sword straight through the side, you know, in one side, out the other, basically like turn the the attack that killed Kagura like 90 degrees and that's what that's what you get here. Now, they immediately diminish this by showing Funamushi in the preview for the next episode seemingly not particularly suffering. Admittedly, it was only a 1 or 2 second clip, but simply the idea that he seems to be standing despite suffering two 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 Rasengans getting a you know super effective lightning attack against him and being stabbed through the stomach by a ninja sword that just feels excessive when kagura is taken out by one attack um, admit you know again with the whole kagura thing he used up a lot of his energy to block the attack but now you've sort of diminished that because actually funamushi had an even more powerful attack so it makes kagura's death feel a little weaker as we go on i get it, it it's beginning to feel more and more like oh we were maybe dismissing Funamushi and how strong he is a little bit but still he is the second in command to Seiran who's dying question mark and there's still other villains who I, I assume are above his level and what are we doing with them and so it does feel like the arc is a little stuck here given that we're still dealing with Funamushi as of the end of this episode this probably if, if you were pacing this correctly this probably should have been the death of Funamushi but what they seem to want to do is potentially have him witness Seiren's last moments and then he might die himself go into battle after her death and and that's when we see him actually get taken out because what they do seem to be doing is they want Boruto to feel like uh, rage and anger towards Funamushi to the point where Boruto wants to kill him um which is a fine art to go on the the guy the character who is usually like honorable and never purposefully aims to kill other characters is now potentially going for the kill after what's happened and i think that's what like the next episode is called like something along the lines of like furious rage or something like that um that's an interesting idea to go on with borzo now i <laughs> It's tough because I think the idea has to be that Funamushi is dying. I don't think there's any way he's going to recover from the attacks that he actually has. So what actually happens here? I think Borto maybe acts like he wants to do it, but when it really comes down to it, either he can't bring himself to, or Funamushi just dies in front of him before he's actually able to finish him himself. Because I, I, I think you kind of need to give this kill to Buntan to like that she is technically the one who avenges Kagura to sort of continue her arc of like taking the potential of that character on and continuing his will that's what needs to be done so I actually wouldn't want Borto to be the one who actually is credited with the sort of kill of Funamushi um so there's that 
you know, there was some nice character moments a little bit towards the start. Um, you had Hebichigo and Bunton both sort of telling uh, me Metal and uh, you know, Sarada to relax, which was just a nice little thing to have to show that they are actually getting on relatively well. Uh, in the middle of the action, um, Funamushi does tease the idea, apparently, that uh, Iwabe and Denki have been killed, which is also part of why Borto is so angry, because in his mind, Funamushi has killed Kagura, Hebichigo, Iwabe, uh, and Denki, so four characters he's killed. So that means that's, that's why Borto wants to do that. So it's very justified, and they've definitely done that, where, like, I think most people in the fandom are now going to be like, please kill off this character, like, kill this guy. Uh, he, he's been a menace so far, basically. He needs to go down. And, and, and there's no way he's surviving this. He's going to be taken out in some way or another. It's just how exactly they go about that. Um, and that's fine. I think that in that sense, it's actually been somewhat reasonable setup. Uh, it's just they probably should have made it clearer from the start that this is the power of this guy. They should have maybe done a slightly better job at um, having Kagura go down to like a really, really, really powerful attack rather than, you know, just it feel a little weak, his death. Um, so I, I think that's the majority of the episode. They didn't really cut away to like anything else. We obviously still have like the, the kind of standoff out at sea for the most part. I suppose I suppose that's sort of been resolved now. Um, we're just waiting to see what the, the high ups in the in the, the Fanato do about like when are they going to attack the mist. And so uh, Amari seems to be taking over the um, leadership. So what's he going to do? The sun seems to have a tactical plan, but Amari has now come back and taken over and he's maybe not as tactical. And there's the idea that he lost in the past. So is him taking over from his son actually going to lead to the, the, the loss again for the Fanato here? Again, there's still uh, the Ikada stuff to come back to. So this might be the, the episode that finally transitions us back into that, in that if Fanato, uh, sorry, if Funamushi is brought back to Seiren and potentially he dies in front of her, or he sees her die, some combination of those things, um, that will lead to, I suppose, those two characters being gone. That's going to affect Ikada as well as the other um, members of the Fanato and probably force the ending of the arc to happen as everyone rushes to get revenge on everyone else for the deaths of certain characters. That seems to be their way they're going with this. Um, but it's, it's getting a little bit complicated because you have all of these dynamics and that Borto's dealing with this idea of he needs to kill people, potentially, but he also has this kind of close connection to Ikada that they're going to have to bring up at some point. There's a lot of Ikada stuff that's going to have to come out about his powers and what side that he's, he's on. Um, there's still actually quite a lot to resolve. Um, so there's still the sense that the arc is still quite a few episodes left. It doesn't feel like it's going to wrap up anytime particularly soon in that the next episode might get us towards the ending, but there's so much still to happen. So um, I'm, I'm still interested. I, I definitely am still interested, even though they're maybe not executing amazingly well on using the deaths of these characters like super effectively it's at least something of substance is happening in these arcs because they are getting to the point where they're they're upping the stakes by having characters who've been in focus for a while die um again you're, you're never super happy when they do this sort of like attack on titan season one thing where like you get to see a character for like an episode or two but they're they're only introduced and developed a bit so that their death has meaning and that's there's a little bit of an element of that happening here but like i said once at the end of this arc we can come out of this and buntan on her own or buntan and kyoho are pushed in a direction that makes them feel important where we can go back here see the development and see that Buntan has been affected by what's happened here and she won't she she won't let the sort of sacrifices of 
her other comrades of Kagura, what sort of he did for for them, for her, putting himself on the line to make sure they get their freedom after their help on this mission, that that doesn't go to waste, that she will continue his legacy. Once they do that, it should all be, I think, relatively okay. But they need to do that handover of the importance of the character well. So there's pretty much my review for the episode. So in the comments, let me know what your thoughts are on this one. How do you think they're doing the sort of deaths of kind of relatively important characters so far? Um, and where do you think they're heading with certain things here? Do you agree that Buntan seems to be the, the character they're going for here? Or um, is there more at play here? So definitely let me know in the comments. But that has been the video. Thanks for watching and bye.